This is a planar PX2210MW monitor. This is a 22 inch widescreen monitor. These monitors were purchased in large numbers at the place where I work, and they have failed in large numbers as well. Now, uh, if we hit the power button, nothing nothing appears to happen in fact the monitor is on and if you take the old flashlight trick and you hold it up real close to the screen you can actually see that there the screen is actually on it's just that the backlights are not on so that would say we have an inverter failure It seems that these monitors all fail eventually. So we're going to take it apart and see what's going on. Disassembling the plain RPX 2210MW monitor is like almost any other monitor, except there's a few things to keep in mind. The first is that this monitor is snapped together unusually tightly. There's almost no space at all in that seam between the front and the back, between the front bezel and the back cover. Um, very, very hard to get it started. What I have resorted to doing is taking a, a flathead screwdriver and then, you know, driving it in with a ball with a uh, rubber mallet to, to get the thing started. Now, the other thing is this. These are the buttons. And underneath there, of course, is a button board, a small circuit board where these buttons reside. This button board is actually glued into the front bezel. And there's a, there's a very short cable from the electronics to that card, to that board. When you're separating the front bezel, this should be the last place. You should separate everything else first before you get here. And then very carefully work through here, otherwise you'll damage that cable or board. The second thing is when you separate, when you when you separate the bezel from the back cover, you've only got about a centimeter. If, if you pull too hard, you're going to break that cable. So keep the bezel with the monitor. Don't pull the bezel away from the monitor. Pull the back cover away from the monitor. Okay, I'm going to start opening this thing. Very, very tight. Boy, this thing just does not want to give up. Okay, I've got most of the top opened. The top seam has been opened. I'm going to work my way down the sides. Now I have loosened up the bezel on the top and two sides. And now we're going to carefully work on the bottom, saving this part for last where the buttons are located.
Okay, there. Now you can start to see that little white thing there. That's that connector. We have to be so careful of that connector right there. It is so easy to break. Okay, now the bezel is completely loose. Now, again, at this point, you do not want to pull the bezel away, because if you do, you'll break this connector. This, this cable is very, very short. You can just kind of barely see it. If you pull, if you pull that, it's going to break that connector. What you want to do at this point is keeping everything together, you want to lay the monitor down on its face and lift the back off. I can't emphasize how important that is. I have broken those connectors in the past and it's heartbreaking. Okay. You can see just how short that cable is. There just isn't much room at all. I want to get a close up of that connector. Um, if you if you tug on this cable too hard, it's going to break this connector off of this board, and then you're really you're really screwed. There isn't much you can do at that point. And this connect the, 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 these two are connected to each other very tightly. Um, what I try to do is get maybe like a little jeweler screwdriver underneath this connect under underneath the um, the clip here. And see if I can't work it loose. I want to lift up this little, this little hook. This little hook right there. If you there, I lifted it up. Now, with that hook lifted up, I can probably there we can work it loose. See this little thing here. You got to lift. Now we got to lift this thing up. That little that little hook is holding that cable in place. If you do it just like I said, you will save yourself a world of, of hurt. Now with the button board disconnected, you can now lift the monitor out of the front bezel. And there's that button board basically glued in, and that very, very delicate connector. If you're not careful, you'll break it. Break that connector right where it inserts into that board, and then you there's really no no way to fix it. Now there's a metal shield here that it, it basically locks the uh, power cord socket into place. This metal shield has to come off in order to get that power board off. So you basically sort of pull that back with your fingernails and then just sort of work it a little bit and it will eventually pop out of there. It's sort of hooked underneath the power cord. Okay. You have to just sort of wrestle with it for a little bit in order to get that to come out. Next, of course, are these uh, these are the high voltage lines that take uh, that take high voltage from the uh, inverter to the uh, back lights. So those will have to come off. Okay, now with those four uh, high voltage lines disconnected, next we take off the, this this whole metal can is held on with uh, screws here and here. Right there, a little countersunk screws, just kind of unscrew those. Now this, I guess what you call a board carrier, is now mostly loose. One thing left, there is some metalized tape between this uh, board carrier and the rest of the monitor. This will need to be peeled off. This, this uh, peels off fairly easily. OK, 
Okay, now this whole board carrier assembly should be loose. And we can take it and just sort of rotate it around. One thing to remember, you're still connected right here between the main board and the panel. I want to damage that cable. There are two cables connecting the main board to the power supply board. Now, one of these connects on the power supply board side, but the other one connects on the main board side. So unfortunately, because of that, we're actually going to have to loosen up both of these boards. Now there are three screws on each, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And we will go ahead and remove those. The main board is also held in place by the video connectors. VGA, DVI, and HDMI. And there are one, two, three, four, five screws that will have to be removed. Okay, those five screws have been removed. On the power supply board, there is this little plastic connector. It goes right through a hole in the middle of the board. It, it's got like little hooks on either side of it. You have to compress those little hooks and sort of push that thing in through that hole. Okay, we got that pushed through. Now the power supply board is loose. So here's that first connector. We can go ahead and disconnect now. We've disconnected this connector from the power supply board. The other connector is located underneath the main board. And this one is pretty hard to get out. That's in there pretty tight. So be careful removing it. Okay, both of those connectors have now been disconnected. The power supply inverter board is now completely free. And we can now get a closer look at it. A little more about that button board on the bezel. Now, what can go wrong? Well, this button board can just pop out of here real easy. It's basically glued in. And what, what can happen is it can, it can pop off. Now, that's not catastrophic in and of itself. You know, you can always just, you can just sort of press it back in. There's like a little, there's some little tiny clips along the bottom here. You kind of hook it underneath those. And then you can just sort of press this thing back in. In which case you can, when, when you, when you, when you put it back together again, everything just sort of hold, it'll just sort of hold itself back in place. There are things pressing against it from the other side. So this, this can work. This isn't the end of the world if, if that, if that pops off. Now here's a different one. This is a catastrophic situation. What's happened here is the connector has literally torn off the board. It's actually ripped off the board and, and, and it's, what, what, it's being held on by the circuit traces at this point. But this, this has now been ruined. This, this, can't be, this can't be used. There's no fixing this. Now we have the power supply board out and we can get a, a closer look at it. The thing that jumps out at you right away is this capacitor, uh, C804. This is a 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. And you can clearly see that it is swollen. The top is bulging. A little bit of material leaking out of it. 
And I have seen this in every single one of these monitors that have failed. 100% every time that capacitor has been bad. The interesting thing is there are two more capacitors on this board which are also 1000 microfarad 25 volt. But you can see it's a different brand. It's a, it's a, it's a wider capacitor. Um, in this case it's made by Elite. These are brown in color. This one is purple in color. This one is made by Hermi. I have seen these capacitors before, these purple Hermi 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitors, and they're, they seem to have a failure rate of about 100%. They, they always, always fail. I don't really understand why they use two different brand, why they use two different brands for the same value capacitor on the same board. I mean, I, I, who, who knows why they did that? All I know is that these ones, you know, and, and the several of these I've fixed, these are all, these have always been good, and this one's always been bad. Now, that's not the only problem with this board. That's the obvious problem, but if you just fix this, your monitor is still not going to work. If we flip it over, we find two surface-mounted chips right here and right here. These are labeled Q806 and Q805. This is what Q805 and Q806 are. This device, APM4548AK, made by ANPEC. It is described as a dual enhancement mode MOSFET. Basically, it's two uh, MOSFET transistors. One is N channel and the other and the other is P channel. So this chip just basically contains two transistors. Now I've also encountered another device. This one here. Um, the A04620 from Alpha Omega. Again, same sort of device, you know, dual enhancement mode uh, uh, MOSFET. Uh, essentially the same sort of device, two, two transistors, one N channel, the other P channel. The only difference being that this one has got a couple of Zener diodes between uh, gate and source, presumably for protection from over voltages. It appears that these parts uh, are used interchangeably in this monitor. Now, uh, I don't happen to have any of these on hand right now. However, I do have a couple of these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and swap one of the AO4620s in place of the APM 4548AK. Now what happens is a short develops inside of this device um, between pins four and five. You will be you will measure conduction going in both directions. You shouldn't see that. You should only see conduction in one direction. If you see conduction in both direction, then the then the transistor has shorted out. If we take a volt, if we take an ohmmeter, and we measure across pins four and five of a good chip, we get this: no conduction in one direction, and some conduction in the other, okay? However, in a bad chip, here's what we get between four and five, dead short. Dead short. Now, in my experience, when you have this bad, when you have a bad capacitor, in most cases, one of these two chips will also be bad. It could be either one. 
Uh, it's, it's typically one and only one, and it could be either one of them. I'm not sure why somehow that failing cap causes, I don't know, maybe too much current to be drawn through these. Whatever it is, you'll see that short between pins four and five. Okay, so we need to replace this surface mounted chip. And I'm going to use quick chip to do that. I found that to be the best. I'm not going to go through that in detail. There, there are several videos available that show you how to use quick chip. It's basically a low melting temperature solder. So you can kind of get all the, the pins molten at the same time to just pull off the chip. As far as the cap of the capacitor goes, that's, that's pretty straightforward. We'll just go ahead and pull that out and replace it with a good one. Okay, now I have completed that work. We have the new capacitor. We've gotten rid of this crummy old purple capacitor from Hermi and replaced it with a much better capacitor from Suncon. And we have replaced that uh, dual enhancement mode MOSFET surface mounted chip. So uh, we should be ready to try it out. Now we will begin putting everything back together again. The first step is to reconnect the connection between the power supply board and the main board. And remember there's, there's one connection to be made on the main board and another connection to be made on the power supply board. Now, when putting in the power supply board, remember there's a little bit of a slot right here that the board has to fit into. And then the power cord connector lines up. Then we have to make sure we line up with that little white plastic um, connector in the middle there. It pops right through the middle, and there it goes. Good. Next, we have some screws to put in on the power supply board. We have screws here, here, and here on the main board here, here, and here. And the video connectors one, two, three, four, and five. Now with all of those screws put back in place, we now put the metal shield back over the power connector. I just have to sort of work it in there. Alrighty, just there we go. Now we're ready to flip this uh, board carrier back over and we have to thread the um, cables to the backlights through these holes here and then we need to plug them in to the inverter board. And there's a total of four of them. Now we carefully seat the carrier, the uh, shield board carrier thing around the monitor, around the, uh, around the panel. And we line up the holes right, he right here on one side and on the other to put in those these little countersink screws, like um, right there. Okay, that's pretty much everything on the on the uh, panel and, and electronic side. Now remember that our button board is part of the bezel, so we're going to have to drop our electronics into the bezel.
Now, even if this button board got loose, when you put the panel back in, it pretty much presses it back into place. So that's not a terribly great problem. Now, at this point, we're going to carefully reconnect this connector. And you can see how short that cable is. You really don't have a lot of room to play around. Uh, and reconnect this connector to the button board. Everything has been put back together except the, uh, the plastic back cover. Now, that thing is very hard to get off. So before I finish it, I'm going to go ahead and test it to make sure that it's working. I now have the monitor connected to a uh, power cord and a video source. We're going to hit the power button and see what happens. Wonderful. It's working. Good. So, replacing one bad electrolytic capacitor and one shorted transistor chip, we've brought it back to life. Now that we have shown that the fix has worked, the last thing to do is to put the back cover on the monitor. So it's just simply a matter of just dropping it into place and snapping everything together. It goes together a lot easier than it comes apart. And that's it.